Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 138. TidyX is a screencast we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes, and as you can probably see, Patrick Ward is not here today. Um, he is, you know, busy taking some time off, so I thought I would record episode 138 for us. So TidyX got a wonderful response from episode 137 where we showed you how you can magically create these multiplying tabs as you need them so you can create tabs for each individual uh, player in in our scenario or um, the viewer that requested this they're using it for uh, teacher scores is what I understood um, and so that was a lot of fun to put together uh, but somebody put a comment on there going you know this is fantastic this solves some of the problems that I have um, but you know, I want to make it interactive. So let me make my screen a little bit smaller so you can see what we had last week. So for episode 137, we had these tabs here. These were programmatically generated and they could represent however many players you've got. Um, and they said, great, that's fantastic. But, you know, uh, sometimes I want to be able to actually see and interact with some, some of the content there. So I tried putting it as a plot lead and it didn't work. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can actually turn it into an interactive report where it's still magically multiplying, so you don't have to generate this content yourself or manually type it in, but you get this interactive piece uh, along with it. So I thought that was pretty fun. So that was a great question from our viewer, and I'm excited to get into this. All right, so let's get going with the does not work version so you can see what was tried before. And, and I think that it was totally reasonable what they did. So what they did is, um, I'm starting off with what we had with episode 137 before, where we have this section here where we're loading our libraries. So we're setting our uh, option chunks to uh, not echo so the code doesn't get shown. We're turning off our warnings and messages. We're loading tidyverse. This is new for this one, so we can do a plotly output per interactive plot. And we're generating some data for Bob, Cam, and AJ. They're going to get 400 records, and we're going to, you know, give them some sort of performance uh, value. And we're going to get 1,200 of those, 400 for each one of our players, quote unquote. Next, we go through and we get the unique player IDs here. We know in this situation it was Bob, Cam, and AJ. But if you were to have pulled in this data from like a database or something like that, this is a good way to, to get that information out. Next, we hop into this for loop. So we say for every player of interest in players. So this means for every single player, we're going to assign the value player of interest to be one of those players and then loop through it and then loop through it again until we've hit every single player. We're going to cat out uh, new line, new line, three hashtags so that it's recognized as uh, a child of this tab set header there. But the player of interest, new line, new line, some text that we want to output, filter down to the player of interest, generate a histogram of the player uh, using ggplot2. And then what we did before is we just went back and we printed it. That's how you need to print out ggplots inside of a for loop. However, in order to make it interactive, I think the default standard response to this would be, well, I just turned it into ggplotly using the, a, a plotly using the ggplotly function out of the plotly library. Um, and so let's see how this works before. Let's run that. It runs pretty quick because the data are pretty small. Um, and let's see now. There we go. It popped up. And something doesn't look right here. So we've got our tabs like we expect but we don't have any of the content that we, we wanted here. And that's a problem, right? Because we wanted to be able to interact with the content. We wanted more than the histogram. We wanted to be able to interact with it, right? And so that's not getting what we want. So how can we go about doing this? And so there is a relatively simple way to do this, but it isn't straightforward. I, I spent actually a fair amount of time trying to figure this out. Once I saw it, I'm like, oh, of course, this is... This is how you have to do it. It's it's using an advanced uh, R markdown technique, but something that I think a lot of us can understand how it works. So let's start off now with episode 138. So we've got this same beginning here uh, where we've got we're setting our options, we're loading library tidyverse, library plotly, creating our little tibble there. Um, we're gonna get the unique players out of the um, 
out of the data set there. But now we're going to have to do some unique things here. So the first, we're going to ignore this piece here. That'll I'll, I'll get to that in a second here. So this first part here should be familiar. The new line, new line, three pound signs, player of interest. So that is creating our tab set, right? But you may, you, you see now that I only have these two lines of code here. Uh, let's again skip 32 and let's talk about this piece here. So in NIDAR in our markdown, you're allowed to have these, what's, what are children document or children documents. And what those are, are separate R markdown documents that are able to get rendered separately to your current R markdown. I mean, they get rendered as part of the run of this one, but it gets run separately. We can grab the outputs and then print them. And so normally what this might be useful for is if you've got like a standard introduction paragraph that you want to have across all of your reports. Rather than copying and pasting that paragraph or maybe multiple paragraphs, what you can do is you could put a our markdown document that has all of that, that paragraph in there and you just reference it. And then if it ever updates, you don't have to make sure that your report reflects the current paragraph that you want to be sharing out. All you have to do is re-render and then it'll pull in that updated reference document and, and go forward. But the power of this is it's going to allow us to evaluate the, um, the tab that we want to output separately from the actual overall running of our report. So what you do is you do knitter, knit child, and then the path to the R markdown from the reference of the R markdown that you are currently running. Um, we're going to pass uh, an environment to it. I'll get to that in a second. And then quiet is true. So it doesn't, there's a lot of output, you know, when you knit, it has a lot of output. Quiet is going to turn that off. And then we're going to cat it out again so that the contents are shared as expected. So let's go over to the tab content R markdown to see what's there. And this should be relatively familiar to you as well. This is the same stuff that we had before in our does not work piece here we have the same this cat this plot is summarizing how player of interest performs so you can see we have that here and then we have the filtering of dat down to our player of interest generating the histogram uh, using ggplot2 and then using ggplotly to turn it into a plotly same sort of content here but as opposed now, now it's actually in and its own R markdown report. So it's not going to be part of this chunk here. It's it's sitting on its own to run separately and evaluate separately. So this is going to pull it out of the for loop and run it as is. But as you can see here, we've got values inside of this tab content R markdown that we don't define anywhere else, right? Player of interest is not defined inside of this R markdown as well as dat. And that is where this enver equals param env comes in. And so enver is going to allow you to pass an environment object into this um, function here. And all the values that are inside of this new environment will get passed to the tab content. It's a little confusing. Um, comment down below if you'd like us to go more in depth on how environments work. It is, it, it can be a little complex, but as soon as you understand how to think about it, it's really powerful. And so we're gonna jump back up to lines 25. So we're gonna create this param env using the new.env function. We're going to create a entry in this environment called dat. We could have called this whatever we wanted. We could have called this banana sugar, for example, uh, but we named it the same value as dat in our global environment as in this child environment because we wanted to be consistent because it's then easier to think about it when we use it over here because this is going to be referencing the value here right and so we're passing dat if we change this name to be data b or data a or data set we can still reference that here and it doesn't break it. We don't have to update our, our child R markdown here because it's referencing the value inside of the, the param that's passed. 
So let's leave that as is. Or actually, no, let's undo this. I don't want to do this live. Uh, and then we are also going to hop into this for loop for every player that we have. We're going to cat out, as we did before, the player of interest with the three tabs there. So it's a, a new tab. Now we're going to set in paran of env the player of interest. And again, just like that, it could have been any variable. We could have just called it i, and then in tab content, reference this as i. But again, I think it's easier to have these values be the same across the entire way. That way you don't have to try to remember, okay, here it is player of interest, but over here it's i. Um, that gets a little confusing in my opinion. And so now we can have, we have these, uh, this, all of this prepared. And then this, this is a new section. So this is just as we did with the magically multiplying tabs, how we do some summarization of the team on the whole. And we have the same here just to demonstrate that it, it behaves exactly the same as it, as it normally does. So cool. So now we've got this, so let's knit it. And so now we're going to let this run, but now what we get out of this, oh, I, did I change something? Oh, I changed it up here. Let's undo that change, save that, rerun it. And so now what we'll be getting is the same magically multiplying tabs, but now we have a plotly that's able to be uh, part of our uh, tab sets here. And you can see as we click through them that the histogram changes because well, they're different and they, they all act independently as well. So you don't have to worry about, oh, well, if I zoomed in on Bob, is that going to affect how my, my zoom on cam is? And it allows you to kind of interact and add another layer of dimension to your uh, reports there. Uh, so that is the way that you can turn your static, magically multiplying tabbed reports into a interactive serverless uh, report that you can send out to your uh, executives and have them or key stakeholders and let them interact with this data as well and in a much more fun way. So with that, that is episode 138. Thank you all for joining us. We also realized after we recorded our last episode, we've been now doing this for um, nearly three years. So thank you so much for joining us for all of this time. It's been a lot of fun. And we're continuing to continue to do this. If TidyX has helped you in any way, please consider uh, contributing to us and becoming a Patreon, uh, patron on Patreon. Uh, we totally do this. We do this for free out of the kindness of our hearts. We love doing this. Um, and, you know, we love hearing from you all. So thank you so much and keep on exploring your world.